Thank you. constituents, her community, and her country, and we got to make sure we get her re-elected in 2020. I will take a minute to talk a little bit about my committees. And, uh, and, and so as Bray pointed out, I'm on two committees, transportation and infrastructure being one, and then the other one being oversight and reform. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, as different as you could possibly imagine. <laughs> transportation and infrastructure, uh, great bipartisanship, yeah. uh, civility, uh, yeah. uh, willingness to work together for the common good, for the community, for the country. And, uh, and obviously I'm very hopeful that we get an infrastructure bill through, uh, hopefully by August recess. Uh, then you go over to oversight reform, and oversight reform, you know, I joke you say they probably ought to have metal detectors before we get together, <laughs> because uh, it's, it, it can be pretty, uh, uh, pretty crazy. Uh, obviously, a lot of different opinions on how things should progress, and, and frankly, a lot of partisanship. You know, it, it's funny, one side argues the way they argue, uh, completely opposite the way they argued maybe a year or two ago. Yeah. And, uh, and so it's very interesting climate there, but one of, speaking of climate, one of the subcommittees, in that regard is the Environmental Subcommittee of Oversight Reform. There she is, Katie Porter! Oh, she's, she's a heifer. Exploring the actual documentable uh, impact of climate change from a human toll as well as an economic toll. And then we're going to look to the future as to two different routes. Uh, one route, if we don't do anything, what we're staring at. And two, uh, if we actually do take action, what that can mean for our children or grandchildren in future generations. Katie doesn't look too happy to be the here. The big area that we're also focused on is seeing other and uh, we are going to be having a field hearing uh, in just a couple of weeks, I think. Uh, that site represents approximately 100 sites across America where we have spent nuclear fuel sitting on sites with no intermediate or long-term solution. And uh, fortunately, this is a bipartisan uh, situation. We have to get this addressed. It is an absolute accident waiting to happen. It is an even bigger accident waiting to happen here because in addition to the always the concern of terrorist activities, we have the additional two concerns of rising seas because of where it is and it's sitting on two earthquake fault zones. So we need to get that addressed. So uh, my pleasure to turn it over to Katie for some introductions. It's like a nightmare. What happened? Thank you all for being here. It's really my pleasure to get a chance to talk with you today. Um, I appreciate hardly giving me a fulsome introduction as I was 
of pulling up. Um, I am on the Financial Services Committee. That's my one of the hard at that committee to hold some of the nation's largest corporations accountable, to be fair, um, to treat everybody as the law requires, not to scam and rip off um, our consumers. And I don't care how you vote, whether you vote frequently or infrequently, whether you're a lifelong Republican, lifelong Democrat, no party preference voter, young or old, nobody benefits from being cheated and ripped no, off. No, you're right. Except those who right. Notice how bipartisan their talking points are right now. From the private consumer protection, um, the skills that they've built up and the knowledge that they've built up over the years on consumer protection is something that I've been able to put to work in this Congress. We have also done a lot of community events and outreach. Um, I think we've had six or six town halls now, um, including two on our college campuses in the 45th district. Of course. Victoria and at um, University of California, Irvine, and Go an event at Orange Coast College. Um, upcoming here at the end of May, we have a town hall focusing on concerns particular um, to older Americans, so things ranging from Medicare and Social Security, questions? cost of prescription drugs, elder um, financial abuse, scams targeting older Americans, so I hope that you all can pass the word about that. Who's your congressman? Um, our office is also yeah, focusing a lot on mental health, um, both mental health parity in terms of making sure that people can get access to mental health services and doing a lot on prescription drug pricing. Yes. So I am proud to be a president of um, our colleague Lloyd Doggett's bill um, that would help curb prescription drug uh, pricing abuse, particularly in our Medicare system. Uh, we often hear that prescription drug pricing is a big issue with regard to insulin. And I did a round table recently with patients, providers, advocates, children, adults, all of them are living with things? type 1 mm -hmm. diabetes. But it's not just insulin. <laughs> it's EpiPens. It's cancer drugs. And we can't just deal with one drug here and one drug there because they will just come back and price gouges on another drug next year. We need a comprehensive solution to deal with that. A free also trade. doing a lot of work on surprise billing. Um, if you haven't been surprised billed, I recommend oh, avoiding it. Uh, some of you may and remember that on the campaign trail, my appendix burst. Yes. Um, and God. I went to the hospital and I, while I was, I knew my appendix was going to burst and Google, Google said that. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I felt like I was going to die, so it seemed like something bad was going to happen. Um, I took care to have my friend drive me to Hope instead of to Kaiser, which would have been closer, because I knew my insurance didn't come with Kaiser. So I went to Hogue, I waited 10 hours in the emergency room. Oh, God. Um, partly because I didn't have someone to advocate for me, and because our emergency physicians and nurses and care providers were so busy. Um, Thank you, Obamacare. I had my surgery, they said, oh, this will be no big deal. And when I came to, the nurses and doctors were yelling at each other, which is a sign that you're not. No, not you're okay. Going. I was like, it's a sign that you're going down fast. <laughs> um, and I was really sick because my appendix had burst and there was a lot of infection. Oh, I was God. so thrilled at the quality of care that I got at Hope. I made a full recovery. I took a couple days off from the campaign trail. But then a month later, I got a bill from the hospital. I had nice care and I thought, okay, my insurance showed what they were paying. Ooh. I had a deductible, I had copay, I had I had enough money to pay for it. I wrote that check. Okay. So that could be a lie. And a week later, I got a bill from the surgeon who saved my life. Yes. And the health insurance company had denied what? All of his fee. Saying oh that he was out of the network. Oh. That's a surprise bill. In yeah. other words, you went to an in-network hospital, you didn't have any choice of which surgeons on duty to save your life. So these surprise bills are very, very common and they're something that we're trying to crack down on in Congress, trying to figure out ways to take patients out of this. When I called my health insurance company and I said, I want to appeal, I, I'm concerned this is not right, I think you should pay this. They said, don't you feel that doctor should charge you less? Oh. Do you really, and the surgeon's bill, by the way, was like $2,000. It was actually not very high for the procedure, the follow-up, the aftercare, the whole night. I the hospital five days. Um, and he came to see me twice a day, every day. And I said, no, 
I, I'm comfortable with a trained professional turning okay. the market price. Well, don't you think you ought to call him and ask him to write down his fees? And I said, no. And he said, well, are you sure? I mean, this he's price, price gouging you. And I said, you know who's price gouging me? <laughs> it's the insurance company that I've been paying for nine years. But I said, and now the first time I said, you want me to get into a battle with my health care provider that could compromise my future care and follow-up care. I said, and I've been paying you, and what you've been doing is ripping me off. And the lady said, so I guess you want to appeal. <laughs> We should have so a, 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 a Medicare for all and the prescription drug pricing. Those are the three big health care priorities. Um, we've also done very proud to have helped support the reauthorization of the Violence Against Women Act. Which um, will take your gun away if, if the woman suggests you threaten her. Excuse me. Turn around, please. Excuse me. Whoa! Don't hit him. He assaulted him. He assaulted, he assaulted my friend. No, he didn't. I'm a witness. You hit me. Punch him. Punch me. See what happens. I would love that, but he hit me. But I absolutely respect your right to speak, and I want to hear you. Thank you. So I supported the reauthorization of the Violence Against Women Act, and one of the things that I was very pleased about is we were able to add to the definition of abuse to include economic abuse, which is very, very common. We um, have to go pick out credit in the person's name, steal their identity, run up credit card bills, um, things like that that can make it very difficult for somebody to seek and to get help and to recover from that. So those are some of the priorities that I've worked on here in the district. I've just been delighted to have a chance um, to go and meet so many of you. One of my favorite, probably my favorite thing about being in Congress is I write back by hand to every person under 18 who writes to me. Oh. Um, so, you so nice. have very long plane rides. Um, and there's only so many times that you can watch A Star is Born and have a for me make the pain of the flight go away. Um, so I've been writing notes to, to school kids. I've gotten to go to visit a lot of those school kids and to hear from them and to be encouraging our next generation to be as active and as engaged as we want them to be. So we have a lot of important topics to discuss today, and these are topics that divide our community. Um, and they're frankly, they're dividing our country. And so I just want to make an advanced pitch to ask that everybody be as respectful and quiet as they can so that we can have a civil discussion. We're not necessarily all going to agree in this democracy, but we all have a duty to be respectful to others and to listen with respect and to share our opinions. So thank you all for having me.